So for a long time, the floods were actually dismissed by people who'd never even come out and, and looked at the landscapes. Yeah. Said, well, if you know, if you can't provide a source for the water, then the floods didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, is what he said. My issue with it, and I had some pretty extended discussions with various geologists that have been working on it, and it seems like that there's an Achilles heel in the whole theory, which is this ice dam theory. Because if you're talking about water 2,100 feet deep, you're looking at, at, at the toe, the heel of the ice dam at about 960 some PSI. Now, glacial ice, especially tempered glacial ice, mm -hmm. is usually riding on a layer of basal melt water. It's riven with, with moulins and fractures and interstitial cavities, and it is not a good material for um, for impounding water to any significant pressure. And what you actually see when you look at modern examples is typically modern examples of glacially impounded lakes usually fail between one and 300 feet in depth. And the idea of a... We have a, one in Alaska that does that. Yeah, there's, yeah, <laughs> self-dumping that, that will repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's my issue with it. And I've also, you know, traversed the region quite a bit and there's a lot of field evidence that doesn't really seem consistent with a single outflow from the Clark Fork Valley. We did a traverse up the Okanagan up into British Columbia a number of years ago, and you can see evidence along that whole route from Lake Okanagan right on down to where it meets the Columbia of massive meltwater flows moving south through mm -hmm. the Okanagan Valley. If you fly over and you look down at these mounds, you know, these big uh, mounds. The ripples, the current ripples. The, the ripples. Giant ripples, yeah. Giant ripples that look like the bottom of a lake. Yeah, or, yeah, except that they're they're huge. I mean, some of them are huge. 30, 40, 50 feet in height and 200 to 500 feet in, in, in wavelength. So, yeah, those were, those were actually created like at the waning stages of the floods. Yeah, did you fly over the ones in Montana, Camas Prairie, it's called? And then there's another, there's West Bar in the Columbia, which is a huge three-mile bar. The, the flood uh, gravels are two to 300 feet thick above the modern Columbia, and they're dismantled with those ripples. 2007, a team of scientists from Lawrence Livermore Laboratories and several others, geochemists, were looking at these Clovis sites around North America. The Clovis sites are dated to the same time as these floods. And there was the, considered to be the earliest culture that lived in North America. Well, some studies have suggested that the Clovis culture rapidly disappeared and there would have been a hiatus of about a thousand years followed by the Folsom culture. Well, this group of, of scientists was studying the uh, the, the remains of the Clovis culture, and they kept finding what they referred to as the black mat. And the black mat separated two geological events, one called the Balling Alarod, which was at the end of the Ice Age, it started warming over 3,000 years roughly. Around 13,000 years ago, that slow warming was suddenly interrupted by a spasm of warming, maybe 15 degrees or more centigrade. Within The, the estimate now suggests that it happened as much as within a year and a half. Okay, Wow. I believe that that warming event was associated with the flood. Now, the first flood, the yeah. first, okay, and that was at 13,000 years ago. Now, over the next 1,400 years was a period called the Younger Dryas, where the, 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 the climate shifted back rapidly into full glacial cold, and at 11,600 years ago, suddenly a second warming spasm occurred, and I believe at that point there was a second round of great floods, and it, that the floods are actually the melting of the what is called the Cordilleran Ice Sheet over the, the Canadian Rockies, because if you look in there, I mean these mountain valleys were filled with ice up to sometimes yeah. a mile thick, and it's sure. gone now. Where did that water go? And if you study the topography of the valleys, there was only one direction it could go south, oh, and yeah. when you follow those south, it leads right over the northern rim of the Columbia Basalt Plateau. So if you go east to where the, the lake was, the Lake Missoula, what you see is actually the Thompson River Valley and the Rocky Mountain Trench. Both head up into what would have been under the ice sheet, and they both uh, empty into what was the basin of Lake Missoula. So in 2007, this team of scientists looking at this black mat analyzed its constituents, and they discovered that there was nanodiamonds and magnetic spherules and oh, fullerenes. Oh. Yeah, what does that suggest? That suggests like a, a meteor yes. or, or an asteroid. Yes. Yeah. And this has been a very controversial idea since then. Other teams came out and said, no, 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 we looked and we didn't find it. Then they came back and looked again. They said, well, you were looking in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. In the last two years, I think the evidence has now shifted from 
dismissing it to going back to, yeah, maybe, yeah, because other independent teams have gone out and looked and have now confirmed that, yeah, a lot of this stuff, not at every site, yeah. but, but it'll, at many of the, actually pre pre preponderance of the sites show some of this, the signature of what was probably a, a cosmic event. And I asked the geologist down there during the, um, the lecture, uh, you know, what was the, the square miles of forest area uh, destroyed in the blast here? And he said, what was 200 and... 270 maybe. Yeah, something like that. And during the Tunguska meteorite blast in Siberia of 1908, there were 800 square miles of forest flattened. Yeah. So three times the number of forest area uh -huh. as what happened with this blast. And that was, you know, they're still arguing, was it an asteroid, a comet, or something in between? Yeah. And it, it was actually an aerial blast. Right. And, and there was a small iridium spike, just like at the Cretaceous tertiary boundary of 65 million years ago that wiped out the dinosaurs. There was a big iridium spike. There was a small iridium spike at the Tunguska blast. And now this, this iridium is showing up at the black mat that separates the Clovis from the Folsom culture. So it's yeah. starting to look more and more like around 13,000 years ago, Earth got pelted big time. Huh. And it see, I'm thinking that that is where we need to look for the cause of the flooding. Huh. Yeah. And that the lake, rather than being a cause of the flood, was just another effect of the rapid melting over the Canadian Rockies. Yeah.